Hey guys, so today I want to show you how to flash open ePaper link to such a 7.5 inch display or ePaper price tag. The last time I did show it on the 3.5 inch one and here it is uh, done via this yeah, pogo pin um, adapter DIY board. So by opening up the right position we can insert it there. On this bigger type, we have quite some space here in the back where we need to access it. And it's simpler to just solder it on for a few. I made this, yeah, schablon for it to also know round about where to melt open or where to melt into it. But let's also just share the dimensions round about so you know where to melt into it basically like this and other than that we again need like this USB to UART converter the WCH ones work so far the best you need the DTR pin which is used as a reset pin in this case this uh, adapter board does not have it brought out to the outside and I'm just soldering onto it it's the fourth pin to the right oh, it's pin number 13 overall of this chip you can just google it then otherwise we need ground and we need the transmission pin of the yeah, adapter this flashing is only done via the tx signal so the pc or the web flashing tool does not know if the flashing is successful or not so even if everything lights up and even the blue light is lighting here in the display itself it does not mean it is 100% successful, but it should, of course. There might be other types of displays or even other internals on these. So they do work, but need to be made compatible and so on. What we need is, of course, the soldering iron then. And I will use the tip to melt into the plastic. And while some other people commented that you can, of course, get some specific device just for melting plastic and such. In the end, this tip is like five to 10 euros and this extra device costs like maybe twice that. So even while the tip is getting destroyed after X amount of plastic melts, it's not really that big of a thing. Yeah, and otherwise I will just mark the position roundabout here, take away the uh, paper as it's not needed anymore. Let's get a bit of a closer view and first I will just press in basically at the bottom and go the complete way from left to right to just have a first insertion hole like this. It's basically open already. Then I will just go left and right and pull up the um yeah the plastic as well and then i will just also go over the complete side at the top it's not looking super pretty but it's just what you have to do to to get a nice access to it and after that i'm cleaning the tip and this is normally also all that is needed sometimes you have to basically like uh, pre-tin the tip afterwards and then it, yeah, it's basically fine again to solder. Other than that, it's now to, time to get an exacto knife and pull out the, the melted stuff, basically like just getting it away. And then I will also cut away the excess plastic material to make it look nicer again. like so as well as the bottom part like so and it does not look that bad it could be nicer of course and some other method maybe drilling into it is also of course an option but for me this works just fine. If the light would be enough, let's 
turn on the light, you can also see like the pinout described under it. And what we need to is basically the reset pin. We need the SWS pin and we need the ground pin. The RXT and TXD pins are for UART connection, but since we only want to flash right now, the USB adapter needs to be connected to the SWS pin. So TXD of the adapter to the SWS pin of the PCB to flash it then. And of course, ground and reset to reboot it while it's flashing. So let's yeah, get the soldering iron again, but this time to solder and not to melt. And I will just pre-tin the three needed test points, like the reset, the SWS and the ground pin. Like so, the ground pin is mostly taking the longest to melt as it has quite the SAML uh, spread over the PCB, but it works just fine. Then I will yeah, connect the DTR pin to the reset line, the ground, of course, to the ground line of the PCB. Like so and the TXD pin to the SWS pin of the PCB. This also makes it quite stable. So even when now it is moved around, it's not that big of a deal. Let's zoom out again a bit. Now we can just connect the USB converter to the PC and open up the linked web flasher. It's this TLSR paper UART flasher. You can open it up and then you can click on open the, the COM port. The baud rate and the activation time can be left as it, but you can also set it to 100 milliseconds sometimes. And then you want to open up the yeah 7.5 inch open e-paper link firmware. And other than that, we can now click on write to flash and the LED should start to blink like so. And it is now uploading the firmware onto the microcontroller inside. It's this TLSR8252. And this will take around like 10 to 15 seconds, depending on the baud rate. After that, the light will be staying off. A reset is triggered like this and then the display should just refresh in a moment to a new image and you can already see it pulsing a bit like that. The refresh itself does take around 30 to 35 seconds here on this specific type. It is now, or it has searched for the access point and it looks like it has found it already also. And now we can also wait for it to check in in the access point to upload a new image to it. So the access point did show the display. I did trigger an upload. In the meantime, we can already desolder the, the flashing wires. Just make sure to not short anything too badly. Normally it will just work fine. And like so. So everything can be removed again. And now it's basically finished from the upload side and the flashing side and can be directly used. I'm seeing on the PC that the upload has finished of the image and it will refresh to this new image right now. And there we go. That's it. That's how quickly and fast you can go
to open ePaperLink compatibility. See you next time.